Alright guys, how's it going? I've been working on a very large video, however this past two days I have been inundated with requests to cover this topic. It is of course Intel crushing Computex with their 28 core chip, running at a staggering 5 GHz. And before I get to the meat of the analysis of this, we'll start as I so often do by taking a little look back over the past year or so. And it was just about a year ago when I launched my You're Beaten Intel video. And it looks like some other guy has ripped off my video, in fact. 8 views. I hope that was worth the hassle. But anyway, clicking on this Your Beaten Intel video, and we can see I have subtitled it Thread Ripped to Bits, commenting that Intel are about to pay the price of years of tech stagnation, lack of innovation, and a previously friendly tech press who finally woke up to their greed. Pretty harsh words, but essentially what happened was, just after AMD launched Ryzen 7, which was 8 cores and 16 threads, they then launched Ryzen Threadripper, 16 cores and 32 threads, and the clock speeds remained competitive as well. The Threadripper announcement took a lot of people by surprise, although I had predicted it in my Future is Zen video, and it also appeared to have taken Intel by something of surprise as well, because Intel had basically added two extra cores to their high-end desktop platform. You can see here Ivy Bridge E was a native 6 core CPU. And moving on to the next generation Haswell E, we saw support for 8 core and 6 core CPUs. And then with Broadwell E, we saw Intel's first 10 core desktop processor. So Intel had been adding a couple of cores to their high end desktop segment with each new series. But then, perhaps surprisingly, we learned that their Basin Falls platform, their Skylake X platform, would still only have a maximum of 10 cores for their high end desktop. Though this was a leaked slide long before the CPUs were due for release. But once Intel had caught wind of Threadripper with its 16 cores and 32 threads, we soon caught wind of Intel's intention to launch their first 12 core processor for desktop instead. But I guess Intel possibly weren't counting that well back then, and it wasn't until later when they decided to launch their first 18 core desktop processor that they had actually woken up to the looming Threadripper threat. And this in itself was an absolutely massive change. And let me just explain to you again exactly why this was such a huge change. All of these high-end desktop processors from your Ivy Bridge E, your Haswell E, your Broadwell E, and your originally planned Skylake X 10-core CPU are all based on enterprise-level silicon. As explained over at Anantech, when Intel makes its enterprise processors, they have historically produced three silicon designs. You've got your LCC, which is your low core count, your HCC, which is your high core count, and your XCC for the extreme core count. And this table basically shows how it works, at least in terms of Skylake SP. In this case, your low core count CPUs would have a maximum core count of 10. And we can see it's a fairly large CPU. Moving up to the high core count, we can now see an 18 core maximum and a corresponding increase in die size for those extra 8 cores. And from this, we can figure out that for the high end desktop, we only ever saw the low core count silicon, as you just saw there. And again, for Skylake X, 10 cores would have been the maximum. So obviously, when Intel starts talking about more core options, even highlighting the difference in colors 12, 14, 16, and 18, what they had actually done here was instead of simply only offering the low core count CPUs, they were now also including the high core count CPUs on their high-end desktop platform. That is quite a large change after Threadripper launched. Now I'm sure you can figure out where this one is going because, as you remember, at this year's Computex, Intel demoed a 28 core processor, which was also clocked at 5 GHz, but we'll deal with that in a second, because going back to Skylake SP, the XCC Extreme Core Count has a maximum of 28 cores, and it is a humongous CPU at almost 700 square millimeters. Intel must be using the same silicon as their highest end server CPU. And it's safe to say that most or many of the tech press were following this and realized that we were basically looking here at an Intel Xeon Platinum 8180 processor. Intel's highest end CPU. But moving on to the really important part was this incredible clock speed of 5 gigahertz. Now Intel's marketing is fairly clever and dumb at the same time. And just let me explain that here. They just announced their 5 gigahertz Core i7 8086K anniversary CPU. And all the talk has been about this being the first 5 gigahertz desktop CPU, which was also a falsehood because AMD's FX 9590 was in fact the first 5 gigahertz CPU. But regardless of that, Intel just announced this 5 gigahertz 6 core CPU. And people were quite wowed by this 
No, it's effectively just a cherry-picked 8700K. The best quality silicon, and it's a special limited edition. Very limited, in fact, of around 50,000 parts. So after just announcing this, 5GHz, 6-core CPU, we then heard of the 28-core at the same clock speeds. Very clever marketing to bring these two to the fore on the same day. But let's get back to this massive 28-core processor clocked at an incredible 5 gigahertz. And as mentioned, the most likely probability is that we are dealing with a Xeon Platinum 8180 processor. Launched in the third quarter last year on Intel's 14 nanometer lithography, recommended customer price of $10,000. As we saw, the 28 cores, processor base frequency of 2.5 gigahertz and a maximum turbo frequency of 3.8. Now at Computex, this 28 core monster was running 5 gigahertz on all cores. So basically double the processor base frequency. And then we get to the important part, which is this TDP of 205 watts. You probably know that power does not rise linearly with clock speed and voltage. The higher you push the frequency, the higher the voltage required and the power usage just starts to really run away. And over at Hardware Unboxed, they in fact managed to kill their 7800X at only 4.7 gigahertz. And we soon learned that Skylake X had extremely high power usage when overclocked. Over at Tom's Hardware Test, they analyzed the Skylake X mess and found an issue with the thermal paste and runaway power. Nobody anywhere in the press could get near 5 gigahertz with only the 18 core Skylake X CPU. So how did Intel manage to get 28 cores clocked at 5 gigahertz? Now taking a look through the tech press, it seemed quite clear that Intel was releasing this part, this 28 core processor, at 5 gigahertz. Over at The Verge, Intel teases outlandish 28 core processor for end of the year. Intel is promising to turn this processor into a real product, and if it manages to do so for workstations or even consumer PCs, it will put it way ahead of AMD in the multi-core battle. As you know, AMD's Threadripper chips are only 16 core 32 threads. So possibly not the most forward-looking article over at The Verge. Over at Engadget, Intel's Bryant says it's not just a concept as Intel plans to sell the 28-core CPU by the end of the year. And there was also a video over at Engadget. I'll pick out one or two highlights here. After blowing our collective minds with an 18-core i9 processor last year, Intel is back at it again, this time with a massive 28-core processor. What's more, the new chip pushes its top speed from 4.2 gigahertz up to a full 5 gigahertz. The new 28-core chip appears to be the genuine article, though. In a brief demo at Computex, Intel showed one just absolutely chewing through a Cinebench benchmark with a score of 7,334. Such a feat's only been possible with multiprocessor machines in the past. And I'll talk a bit more about that later. Over at Tweaktown, RIP Threadripper, Intel teases 28-core 56-thread CPU at 5 gigahertz. And we learned that Intel said that this particular 28-core processor will be running at 5 gigahertz, which is absolutely incredible. Mentioning that Threadripper can't get close to 5 gigahertz now. So if Intel can get to the market with this at 5 gigahertz, then AMD is going to be in for a bad time before Threadripper 2 is even unveiled. Wow, Intel. Wow. Yes, wow indeed, Tweak Town. But not every website fell for it hook, line and sinker. Over at PC World where we saw that Intel was crushing Computex, where Bryant was saying that Intel will break from tradition and show an unannounced processor early. There doesn't appear to be any subterfuge, which is an interesting thing to say. But Bryant confirmed that yes, there would be a 28 core CPU, will show it screaming all sorts of benchmarks and workloads running world leading performance, and then backed that up of course with 28 cores running at 5 gigahertz. And again at PC World we got the comparison saying AMD's Threadripper chips is only 16 cores and 32 threads. So Intel would be well ahead. And it's very interesting for me going over these articles. And we see the authors that are far more questioning of what is going on. For example, over at Tom's Hardware, where the author mentioned that the impressive display of multi-threaded performance probably consumed a hideous amount of power, which wouldn't lend itself well to a reasonable TDP rating for the processor. As such, Tom's assumed that the processor was overclocked for the presentation. Tom's also noted that processors with a higher core count, such as these 28 core models, often can't reach such high frequencies on all cores. As we can see, their 7980XE only got 4.2, and Tom's of course has access to all the hardware. Over at TechRadar, clearly there are some question marks over how Intel will manage power consumption when balancing that blazing clock speed with the core count. TechRadar also mentioned the 8180, the server CPU, and the monstrous price tag, which they also did over at TechGage. 
Now, they also mentioned that perhaps a CPU could be running up to 500 watts, but it was the cooling that really caught Tech Gauge's attention. While the system looked water-cooled, it was quite clear that they had been seriously modified, and in fact, the radiator looked like it was only hooked up to the graphics card, and the plot was beginning to thicken. Now, you remember the video over at Engadget? And on closer inspection, over at Tom's Hardware again, they had noticed this image sourced from the video that Intel was apparently running some sort of closed loop cooling that required insulating material around the tubing. And TechGage had actually discovered this on the same day. Here is the cooler, a phase change chiller that's typically used to cool large aquariums and it didn't take very long for the tech press to dig deeper. Over at Anantech, we got a sneak peek on Intel's 28 core, all you need to know. Anantech also got a close-up on the motherboard and this thing is a monster. I mean, just look at the VRMs on that. And this is, of course, a server board, not a consumer board. Anantech also confirmed that the cooler was a Halea HC1000B, which technically has a cooling power of 1770 watts, which was pretty interesting because Intel was also using a Corsair 1600 watt power supply. Now, all of that had happened on the 5th of June. And one day later, AMD unveiled their 32 to core Threadripper 2. This one was probably a surprise. I had heard from a source a few months ago that this would likely be happening, but I never said anything about it. AMD could of course have launched a 32 core Threadripper last year, although the clock speeds would have been well down and possibly not quite high enough for a desktop or workstation. But this one has taken a lot of people by surprise and it appears to have taken Intel by surprise as well. Hence they are what appear to be hastily cobbled together demonstration of their own 28 core 5 gigahertz CPU. What happens is, of course, at Computex, people catch wind of what's going to happen, and Intel have caught wind that AMD are about to launch this monster 32 core Threadripper 2 and they've basically gone ahead and tried to steal the thunder. And in many cases, it did work. As you saw over at The Verge and in Gadget, and especially at Tweaktown, where Threadripper's resting in pieces, AMD's marketing needs to think better about these things. And in fact, for this segment of the video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. You remember what I said about Intel's marketing getting it right with their 5 gigahertz 6 core CPU, and then launching this 5 gigahertz 28 core CPU, just giving the sheer wow factor on the same day. But I also said that Intel's marketing is great and awful at the same time. And getting caught with this massive phase change cooler and these little mistakes, you can be sure that this comes back to haunt them later. That's what we mean by good and bad marketing. I don't know why AMD unveiled this on the 6th of June, giving Intel the chance to do that and to steal the thunder. AMD needs to think a lot harder about what they're doing with this. And this is the interesting part here, because this is how I analyze this whole situation. Intel was not expecting AMD to unveil this 32 core Threadripper 2, which to me is pretty staggering. Had they been expecting it, they could have done a much, much better job on their own demonstration and at least keep us guessing to the nature of the cooling in it. As it was, rudimentary checks were enough to show that they were powering and cooling this with some very extreme hardware. On the flip side, AMD not understanding that Intel would go ahead and do this is to me also just incredible. I said at the beginning of the year that 2018 would be one of the dirtiest fought years ever and it's all coming through Intel losing their lead. And Intel are not the type of company that will take this lying down. They will do everything in their power to steal AMD's thunder as AMD retakes the lead. Why AMD doesn't seem to figure this one out yet blows my mind. Threadripper should have been unveiled on the 5th of June, not the 6th of June. It's pretty likely that AMD would have shown their own Cinebench score. And on this 32 core Threadripper 2 CPU, we should expect around about the 6000 Cinebench R15 marks. Now, Intel's massively overclocked 28 core CPU. That got 7300-ish which is just over 20% higher score. Intel showing that meant that AMD could no longer go ahead and show their own Threadripper 2 at 6,000 points. Had AMD been expecting this, AMD could also have turned up with their own exotic cooling system and probably just about beat that 7,300 score of the 28 core 5 gigahertz Intel CPU. And let's actually just take a quick look at the numbers on that. And over at Extreme Tech again, where they learned that Threadripper 2 will have a 24 core and a 32 core version. Interesting 
interestingly though, both will have a base frequency of only 3 gigahertz. Now remember TR1, Threadripper 1, the 1950X had a base frequency of 3.4 gigahertz. And perhaps more surprisingly, a boost of only 3.4 gigahertz for Threadripper 2. This one doesn't really make sense, as Extreme Tech says, this last one is a work in progress figure. There is absolutely no reason why this should be so low at 3.4 gigahertz. As you know, the second generation Ryzen increased clocks by maybe around about 10%. Looking at the base frequency, 3 gigahertz over 32 cores, it's a humongous amount of horsepower, it really is. But this 3.4 gigahertz makes no sense whatsoever. That should be as high as the highest boost clock on the 2700X, at least. So I'm going to take these numbers with a pinch of salt, and I actually believe that we will see 3.4 gigahertz base, or at least with reasonable cooling and precision boost 2 and XFR. The more likely clock speed we will see over 32 cores should be around the same 3.4 gigahertz as Threadripper 1. And the Threadripper 1 1950X averaged around about the 3000 mark for Cinebench R15, which is why I said 6000 for the 32 core version. You're never going to get exactly 100% scaling. However, the second generation Threadripper also has support for better memory, and depending on timings, that kind of thing. 6000 is a fairly realistic number for this probable 3.4 GHz CPU. And interestingly, over at Linus Tech Tips yesterday, Linus was allowed to run this 28 core CPU with water cooling and it scored around 6100 points which means the CPU is running somewhere between 4 and 4.2 gigahertz and those clock speeds are far more reasonable for the actual boost clock of this part. 6100, 6000 points, this is going to be really really closely fought battle between this 28 core and the AMD 32 core but there's going to be a massive massive difference in power draw. AMD did show demos and these were air cooled and AMD has also said that 250 watts TDP will be the maximum of this part. I will be surprised if they now stick to that maximum and instead don't go with something a bit more aggressive. But regardless of that, if we just say 3.4 gigahertz will score 6,000 Cinebench points and that a likely reasonable overclock for this CPU would be 4.2 gigahertz, that would be an overclock of 23.5%. So if we just add another 23.5% to that 6,000 score, we now see 7,410 points, with Intel's massively overclocked 5-core CPU scoring 7,330. This is how close this is going to be. But again, the difference here. Intel is using a 1700-watt cooler and a 1600-watt power supply. Threadripper 4.2 gigahertz on all four chips, probably running around 600 watts. In my opinion, you're looking at slightly better performance at less than half the power. And this is how I see that particular matchup going. The AMD, you could have shown that demo at 7.4, possibly even higher. Your marketing needs to get these things right. You cannot continue to give Intel the chance of stealing your thunder like this. Now to wrap this one up, it's safe to say that this recent demonstration of Intel's 28 core processor running at 5 GHz certainly stirred the pot at Computex, particularly because the presentation appeared to imply that this would be a shipping chip with a 5 GHz stock speed. Unfortunately, and as you just learned, it turns out that Intel overclocked the 28 core processor to such an extreme that it required a 1 horsepower industrial water chiller, which meant that it took an incredibly expensive, not to mention extreme setup to pull off the demo. You definitely will not find this type of setup on a normal desktop PC. Forget all about getting 5 gigahertz on this chip. This is miracle class silicon. And in fact, I was blown away when I saw this. The mere fact that Intel could do 5 gigahertz on this CPU was just incredible to me. And analyzing it, I believe that Intel has probably now moved this CPU and all of their CPUs, in fact, onto the 14 nanometers plus plus node. I think a lot of people forget this, but Skylake X was actually only done on Intel's enhanced 14 nanometer plus process. But as I've mentioned recently in videos, Intel made a fairly decent jump from 14 plus to 14 plus plus. I can see no way that this 28 core Xeon would get anywhere near 5 gigahertz on the 14 plus process, but it could possibly do it on the plus plus. But obviously you're talking about absolutely astronomical power requirements. It's just not a feasible chip. But what's actually important about this is Intel's attempt to deceive. They have attempted to deceive the press 
who then passed on erroneous information to you, which in the end stole AMD's thunder. There's been a lot of mistakes made here, but it all comes down to one thing, Intel's deception. And some guys in the press will forget about it, other guys will get upset about it. Intel claimed the whole fiasco is merely the result of a flubbed recitation of pre-scripted lines, with the accidental omission of a single word overclocked. Tom speculates that maybe that's the truth, but there's a lot of room for debate considering how convenient an omission that is. Intel's Gregory Bryant began the demo by explaining that the company is working to bring the new chip to market in Q4 of this year, saying, Without further ado, I would like to present to you a new 28-core processor. At the end of the demo, which focused heavily on the performance benefits of the 5GHz clock speed, Bryant said, What's amazing is that trade-off, this actually being a 5GHz in single-threaded performance frequency and not having to sacrifice that for the kind of multi-threaded performance, so you've kind of got the best of both worlds. I guess it's possible that they forgot to disable multi-core enhancement in their BIOS. But as Tom goes on, it's easy to see how some journalists, especially the less tech-savvy ones, could assume that Intel had designed a new 28-core CPU that defies the laws of physics. And continuing over at Tom's, the hideous amount of juice required to power the demo system prevented our contacts from showing us the performance demo privately. The area they were in simply didn't have enough dedicated circuits for the task. And finishes with, according to Intel, the accidental omission of a single word skewed the entire demo. For now, the popular sentiment is that Intel is pushing the boundaries of the demo game a bit too far as it competes fiercely with the resurgent AMD. In this case, we think Intel's demo disaster was a bit of both. Over at Anantec, and Intel are getting squeezed pretty hard as well. I'll leave all these links in the description, you can read them yourself and make up your own mind. But some of these guys in the tech press are getting more and more annoyed about Intel. Intel's accidental omissions. For me, it's very easy to avoid these things. Anything that comes out of Intel marketing is designed to deceive, and as they lose their lead, they will become more and more deceptive. We've seen them doing stuff like this in the past. Remember Mooley pretending to drive, what was it, Formula 1 2013? Where we were actually watching a video of the game. That stuff was just brain dead. I believe the tech press should have the default position of disbelieving everything they see and hear that comes out of Intel. That should be their default position rather than falling for this crap in the way some of them did. On a technical level, this was so obviously massively overclocked. When I first caught wind of this, I had actually read about it on Reddit and I saw the headline of 5 GHz, 28 cores, and I instantly knew that this was a heavily overclocked part with extreme cooling required. And last Tuesday at my Patreon Discord, I said, 5 GHz on 28 cores in itself? That is basically miracle class silicon. And nobody can actually believe that's gonna be a real part. And it just shows how desperate Intel is. To me, this stuff's just obvious. You had all the Skylake X stuff before. We know that it had power problems. And that was with the 10 core CPUs, let alone the 18 core and now the 28 core CPUs at 5 gigahertz. And even if it is 14 plus plus silicon, you don't need to know a huge amount about this to understand that there is simply no way that this could possibly be a viable actual CPU. 5 gigahertz, 28 cores. It's like Tom said, this is physics defying stuff. And I just don't understand why the tech press suffers it any longer. I'm pretty sure none of them enjoy this. And it can all be avoided by simply disbelieving everything that comes out of Intel. Don't believe a word they say and scrutinise everything before making your articles. And going back to where I started, your beaten Intel. One year ago, I predicted Intel would lose. I knew full well that they had options. They had the option of releasing these high core count CPUs. They even had the option of releasing those extreme core count CPUs if they had to. Quite often I get called out in these statements like you're beaten Intel because it's a year in advance. This time around, 32 core Threadripper up against this 28 core, not 5 gigahertz Skylake X, it's going to be a very, very, very close fight but I also believe that AMD cannot lose it if they play it smart. Because really, it's going to come down to cooling and power draw. For these high-end desktops, I reckon that most of the tech press, you hand them really good water cooling, they're going to accept that. They're going to say that's okay, but you obviously cannot hand over a one horsepower chiller and expect them to let you away with that. I think AMD can just about win it this time if they squeeze every last ounce out of Threadripper 2. 
And Intel are once again about to pay the price of years of tech stagnation, lack of innovation and a previously friendly tech press. That's what I said a year ago, that's what I'm saying today. Next year, Threadripper may move up to 64 cores or they may stick to 32 at a lot higher clock speeds. Regardless of that, Intel has pulled all of their levers, they've got nothing left to offer against it. And I knew it would take a couple of years, but this time next year Intel will be completely defeated and not even liquid nitrogen will be enough to save them. But that's me done with this one. As mentioned at the start, I've been working on a massive video. You will see that next week, hopefully early next week. It's a huge, huge video. One of those history videos that I am pretty sure that you're all going to really enjoy. Until that time, don't forget to like and subscribe. As usual, be sure to check out all the video links in the description below. And I'll catch you later, guys.